Welcome back. This is Rhett with the Heights Lab. Today we're going to be replacing the capacitors on our 1979 Moog Prodigy. We're going to start with these axial electrolytic caps. They're in the power circuit. We're going to be upgrading them from 350 microfarads to 1000. I'm going to start out using this soldering wick. The older boards you want to ensure to take your time to remove the components so you don't tear the leads and the tracers. I don't want to put too much pressure on the potentiometer, so I'm going to put the board on its side a little bit, try to remove this. Once the cap is removed, once again, you want to make sure to clear away all the debris and excess solder so the new components can go through easily. It's helpful to use a soldering iron instead of a screwdriver. Here's a look at the old capacitor. Even though it's 350 microfarads, it's about the same size as the 1,000 microfarad. Here's a better look at it. It's from CDE, Cornell. There's only about 10 electrolytic caps on the board. I started with these, again, because it's in the power section. But everything else I'll be replacing pretty much with film caps, except for a few of the tantalums. Here you can see the front face where we've cleared C39 and C38. Keep in mind that these caps are polarized, so it's a good idea to take a picture beforehand, even if it's marked, because sometimes the schematic and the circuit board are conflicting. Once you've gauged the width, you can easily bend the leads using your pliers. These electrolytic caps have pretty long leads, so once you get them in, you can secure them just by bending them back to the circuit board. For my flux, I'm gonna be using a rosin paste. You'll need something to scoop it out to apply. I'm just going to use the end of our old cap. If you're using gel flux or something like that, that's fine. I just happen to have this on hand. I always try to use a lot of flux. It just seems to make the solder flow easily. Here's the solder that I'll be using. It also has a flux core. With the larger electrolytic caps, I like to be generous when I'm applying the solder just to make sure that they have good joints. Now that we have the components secured, we can just take our pliers, trim away the excess of the lead. Now we'll dive straight into replacing some of our disc caps. We're gonna be using Wima or Wima Film MKT caps. I believe the specific series of these are FKP. First, you'll want to check the physical size of the caps. These are located side by side on the board, and the ones I'm using to replace them with are actually the same ferret value, but they are much larger, but I'm gonna squeeze them in. We simply desolder the component, use a little bit of wick, Remove the excess solder and make way for our new component.
Here's a look at the old disc cap compared to the new film cap. Much larger in size, but the same value. Sometimes when you're removing these ceramic caps, they get very hot, so you may want to use pliers instead of your fingers to remove them. Using the wick again just to desolder the board the other way. You really don't want these old tracers to come up. New film caps also have short leads, so you want to bend them a little bit with your hand, but be very careful because the outside casing is made of plastic. Now that we've mashed our components into the board, we can throw a few globs of solder on and we should be good to go. These caps are also very close together, so you want to try to leave a little bit of space in between the joints. Here I'm trying to use a little bit less solder on these as previously with the large electrolytic caps. Good reason for being gentle with this board is it's one of the first generations. It was actually made in 1979, serial number 1179. So it should make it the 79th Prodigy ever made. And we can flip the board over and get a look at our new caps right there. They're smushed, but it's a lot better for the board. After this, we'll shift into more of the audio section, working on caps C2 through around 14. We'll start with replacing an actual film cap. I will be keeping some of the film caps that I can, but the ones that have been tested and are out of value, I will be replacing. Here we go again with a close-up applying the flux. From this angle, you can clearly see a lot of the jumpers that have been added to the board couple of resistors, cap down there. I have two different schematics that I'm going off of. One's the original and one of them's a factory revision. There's been several updates to this board. They added different things over the years with the control voltage, in and out, MIDI, stuff like that. But this one only has an output so far. Here's another film cap. I believe this one is C14 that we'll be replacing. It's gonna use some wick, move the old solder, then the components should come out fairly easy. Here's a little bit better comparison of the older style ceramic and film caps compared to the new film caps. Since we looked at that, here's also a closer look at the leads on the board. Bad shape there anyway, you gotta be so careful. This particular one was very scarred up when I opened it. I had to inspect it just to make sure, but they all seem to have good contact. Anyone would like any videos on soldering, let me know in the comments. I'll try to make it to where you can see what I'm doing and my hands aren't blocking it. Next, we'll be going for C8 and C9. Once again, I'm not 
changing every film, but all the ones that are bad, I'm going to be changing. With the components closer to the interior of the board, you really want to be careful how long you keep your soldering iron on there. You don't want to overheat anything else and mess up another connection trying to fix one. Continuing on down the line, we'll start on C3. It's a disc. We'll be replacing it also with the same value of film cap. Putting in the film caps with the shorter leads, it helps to push them up a little bit after you've added your flux, just to make sure they're seated properly. After I replace a few components, I like to test the board oh, just to make see. sure we're going in the right direction. Oh, you should do this with an assembled to avoid electric shock. Part two is on the way. I'll be replacing some of the IC chips and the rest of the components in the board. Thanks.